Today, I will be reviewing the first substantially informative blog covering the next biggest PVM update called the Fortis Coliseum. This update will come out in the early half of 2024 as part of a multi-batch of updates. Initially, we will get the new landmass, Falamore, south of Zaya. As time goes on, Jyx will update this area with more and more content in consistent patches. Most notably, the Fortis Coliseum will be one of these patches. First, we will cover what the blog mentions, then I'll give my review on the blog. Keep in mind, as this is the initial blog, Jagex will most likely adjust this blog over time based on feedback on the things like the rewards. So if you have feedback after watching this video, leave them in the comments. We will start with a quick intro lore regarding the Colosseum quoted from Jagex. Long ago, when Civitus Illa Fortis was simply Fortis, its citizens worship the sun god Relos even more fervently than they do today. Relos is a god of warmth and sustenance, a god of change and renewal, a god of battle. On the cliffs outside of Cephitus Illa Fortis, there was once stood a great temple, dedicated to sustaining Relos's power. Those foolish enough to commit crime within the city walls were dragged here, kicking and screaming to be sacrificed upon the altar. These days, of course, the Valermians have developed more civilized ways to sustain their god. When he took the throne, King Maximus Tillis ordered the destruction of the temple and replaced it with an even greater monument, the Fortis Coliseum. To this very day, warriors from all over Falamore gather in this hollowed arena to battle to the death in search of fame and glory. Each drop of blood spilt is an offering to Relos and a treat for the roaring crowd. Management of the Coliseum is overseen by one of the seven Teoki of Relos, senior priests appointed by the Teokian himself. The fighters, however, are hand-selected by the Lannistus, the lead warriors who prove themselves on the field of battle. If blood sacrifice and throwing combat sounds like your sort of thing, you're in luck. We just happen to have an invitation with your name on it. So, the Colosseum is a wave-based PVM encounter similar to Fight Caves and the Inferno. The initial PVM counters will be fairly easy and will be targeted for the newbies of PVMers, and the further you progress, the harder the waves will be. The later waves are designed to scale to even the best PVMers in the game. Now, what makes the Colosseum different from Fight Caves and the Inferno? Well, after each wave, you will encounter a few randomized modifiers that you must choose from. These modifiers can be quoted buffing enemies, debuffing yourself, and even altering the terrain for a bigger challenge. So the waves may be predictable in terms of what monsters you encounter, but the penalties will not be as predictable. This means you must be even more adaptive when dealing with later waves. So imagine fight case, but also Dominion Tower from RS3 combined. How does this connect to the rewards and the player's interaction loop? Well, you do have the ability to exit the Coliseum at every wave if you do not think you can progress further, and you will get rewarded based on that. So the further you make it inside, the greater the reward potential. Jackets did say that the best rewards will be for players that make it very far into the waves. There's also an option to rerun the Coliseum with all the modifiers activated if you've cleared all the waves for an even harder challenge with even more modifiers. So this seems like truly one of, if not the hardest challenge Old School will have once it's out because it does imply that you can just keep rerunning it over and over again until you die. There's also this concept called Glory. Glory is like a high score metric for how well players do in the Coliseum. Each wave you progress will garner you glory and how much you receive will be based on your performance on the total waves that you complete. They did say that you cannot farm glory, but to be honest, it wasn't super clear. I'm going to assume they just mean that your glory will be determined by your best overall performance at the Coliseum. So if you did 10 attempts at the Coliseum, only your best attempt of that total will determine your current glory. Unless you do more attempts and you just get a better overall performance, then they will count that one. Now, let's talk about the reward section of the Fortis Coliseum. Apparently, the glory metric also impacts certain drops. Reaching glory thresholds in your run will give you the ability to unlock untradeable uniques. The untradeable uniques, I will assume, will be mostly cosmetic items, which has not been discussed yet in this blog. Similar to how Race 3 gives you cosmetic kits if you successfully beat certain level thresholds, like 500 TOA gives you the fan kit. The epic rewards will be the Glaive of Ralos, the Echo Crystal, Sunfire Fanatic Armor, the Zana's Quiver, and the Sunfire Dust and Sunfire Runes. 
I assume all these items minus the quiver are tradable and not the same ones that are tied to the glory system. I also assume these items will simply become more common as you progress further into the waves. Just like how higher tier raid invos in race 3 gives you significantly better unique chances. The Glaive of Ralos is a level 75 range weapon mainly designed to be the high level defense reduction weapon for range. It has a special that uses 50% power and if it lands it will reduce the enemy's physical defense by 10% of the enemy's magic level. You may reduce the defense further with multiple specials with this weapon, but it will cap at 50% of the enemy's defense. This weapon is also chargeable. The uncharged version lets you do one regular hit, but only up to 50% damage. And the charged version lets you do two of those hits. Both hits will be rolled individually. Next is the Echo Crystal. It is an add-on to a yet-to-be-determined boots that will give you recoil-like abilities on the boot slot. Dragus gave the idea of maybe adding to something like Guardian Boots, but nothing is final yet. The Sunfire Fanatic Armor is next. They are designed to be the next best in slot prayer gear, eclipsing the Proselyte Armor in prayer and defense, but requiring higher stats to wear. And the ultimate prize of the Coliseum is this cape called the Dizana's Quiver. It is the new best in slot cape for range, surpassing the Vorkath Assembler. This item is untradeable and requires beating all of the ways of the Colosseum with enough glory to get it, so like Inferno Cave to the Inferno kind of deal. This item has better stats than the Assembler and saves more Emerald too. As mentioned before, you will get rewards based on how many ways you clear, so even if you do not get these big ticket items, you will still get resources and alcohols, I assume. The Sunfire Dust will regularly be dropped and can be used to charge the Glaive weapon. The Sunfire Dust can also be combined with Fire Runes to make the Sunfire Runes at the Fire Altar. This rune counts as a fire rune, but also makes fire spells hit 10% of its minimum on a successful hit, effectively increasing the DPS of all fire spells. So overall, the Fortis Coliseum is a wave-like PVM encounter with modifiers that is accessible for even newbie PVMers, but only the best PVMers will conquer this challenge to get the best range cape in the game. Players will be rewarded based on their efforts, so everybody gets a bit of something regardless and the chance of unique drops will be based on your wave effort as well here's my opinion of this block my opinion will definitely change though as giants adjust their ideas over the coming months firstly i do want to say that the challenge concept is pretty good i like the fact that anybody can try this content and still earn something even if it's just clearing the first few waves this will definitely encourage players to get better at the game to reach further waves and better rewards the honor system is also fine because we've had similar concepts already in race 3. This one though you can show off and how high your honor can be seems pretty limitless which is cool because of the fact that you can constantly rerun the coliseums over and over until you die. The endless coliseum run sounds very exciting because we've never had such a challenge before. Now let's talk about my opinion on the reward proposals and to be honest with you they don't seem too controversial. A lot of times you know they do have some controversy but these ones uh, seem like pretty neutral or pretty positive the coolest reward being the zana's quiver the new best in slot range cape is fine to me it's a solid upgrade for a very high enchanting effort but still not super broken territory and it's also not tradable next is the glaive of ralos the range warhammer basically Jagex said that this weapon will be better than the hammer on creatures with high magic and high defense in terms of defense reduction but they didn't mention that this weapon is going to be useful strictly when you are in a range setup because you definitely don't want to use this weapon when you're in a melee setup because you still have to land a successful hit. I imagine this glaive weapon will be very good on things like Gall Wars because Sammy, Sarah, and Arma have high defense and high magic and you need high magic for this glaive weapon's defense reduction to work well and you will also be ranging these bosses so they work really really well together. And also bosses like Muspa and Zora and maybe even Corporal Beast this glaive can be really good at. We will see. Jagex said that it won't compete with the hammer and BGS much, which I do agree because you're mostly hammer and BGSing when you use melee setup. And with the glaive, you're mostly ranged scenarios. On the demand side, this weapon here will be super popular as it will definitely help with lots of popular PVM. This will probably be the most prized draw from the Coliseum. So I do expect a lot of players of all modes to try and get their hands on this thing for the money potential and its PVM potential. The Echo Crystal definitely is a new concept for boots and I don't feel comfortable having this item in the game. 
Personally, I wouldn't mind if Jack scraps this concept altogether, mainly because we already have plenty of DPS as it is with all these new DPS items we've gotten in the past few years, and it'd be so weird for boots to all of a sudden have a recoil effect. I can see why they mention Guardian Boots because it's pretty useless as it's focused on tanking. But the real issue is the tanking, the defense stuff. Overall, defensive gear like just this year, DFS, Guardian Boots are so lackluster nowadays. I'd rather Jagex think long term on how to make new content that makes defense matter instead of just always DPS. The Sunfire Fanatic Armor is a fine addition. I personally do not care. Nor do I see too many people complain about Prosite becoming second best assault prayer gear. It also has a higher stat rec to wear over Proselyte, so it's a sensible upgrade. This will help provide a decent GP boost for people learning this content or trying to make money on the lower end. The Sunfire Dust is okay. Initially, I didn't think the Glaive would be that great as a defense reduction item, but after reading it a bit, it's honestly pretty powerful. So having it requires some charging to maximize its ability to lower defense is okay. What I mean by that is the Glaive has two individual rolled hits if it's charged meaning it has twice the chance to land a spec in one hit versus it not being charged. This should keep the GP game more consistently higher for people trying to make money off the Colosseum. Sunfire runes are a whatever item. Whether it passes or not won't change much. I feel like fire spells are typically outdated in today's environment. People often just train with Ancient Magics and Slayer, and we have power staves that make fire spell DPS look like a complete joke. And they did mention something about the harm staff, but honestly, I've always been disappointed with Jagus' treatment of the harm staff, and still, it's pretty disappointing because increasing the consistency of the fire spells is still nowhere near good enough for it to overcome things like a shadow. And honestly, still not much better than a saying, which is way easier to use and way more useful. They would have to just make more bosses that are straight up weak to fire, like maybe give 50% extra damage. That's the only way for the harm staff to actually be useful again in PVM. This item will cater mostly to PKers and a few players that still love to AFK some good old Chaos Gauntlet Firebolts. Overall, I do like the proposal for the Fortis Coliseum and the rewards. It's definitely a Rice certified future update. Looking forward to it. If you guys enjoyed this video or these kinds of videos for me, let me know in the comments or by liking this video. See ya.